U.S. Federal Reserve Chief Ben Bernanke's last meeting has triggered a global turmoil. Tapers in action again. Federal Reserve policymakers cut the pace of bond buying for a second straight meeting. This signals a constant withdrawal from Bernanke's unprecedented easing policy as Janet Yellen prepares to succeed him as chairperson. Emerging market currencies have collapsed post the Federal Reserve move. Joining me now for more on this is Temur Beg, Chief Economist for India at Deutsche Bank from Singapore. Temur, good morning. Thank you for taking the time out. Good morning. Uh, the, the decision from Fed is not really surprising to many people out there. What I want to really understand from you right. is what is your own reading of the Fed now? The fact is that there was not a single dissent. The, the, the decision was very unanimous. What does that really mean going forward for the QE taper trajectory? It's telling us that the uh, controversy associated with the uh, U.S. underlying recovery is for the time being behind us. The uh, FOMC members and the analyst community in general, I think, are catching up to the fact that the U.S. economy grew by 4% in the last half of 2013 and will probably register a very strong growth 2014. And unemployment numbers will keep on surprising on the downside. And as a result, uh, by mid-year, we probably will have unemployment rate in the 6.5% range with an underlying rec economic growth of 3 3.5%. This is exactly what the Fed had been dreaming of. Uh, in the presence of very little inflation pressure, this will allow for a gradual transition to normalized monetary policy. What we think the market is not pricing in right now is how strong the recovery is going to be in the first and second quarter of this year, which might force the Fed into even accelerating the taper in a few months' time. So right now, at the current pace, we will end taper by November of this year. We think that the likelihood of that happening much earlier than that is rising. There are rate hikes all over the place, especially when you talk about the emerging market economies. Is this the stability that uh, the emerging market economies really needed? How are you reading into these developments? We think that we should not look at emerging market with a single lens, that there are pockets of strength and pockets of weakness. And as the tide of liquidity ebbs and rates go up, the weaker countries would be revealed to suffer where the stronger countries would differentiate themselves. Uh, India a year ago was very much at the top of the weak pack. We think that the concerted actions by the authorities has moved it down the list. It's not at the top of the list of countries that get sold off. And we've seen that play out in the last few weeks. Uh, you've seen uh, Argentina's turmoil spread over to Europe, uh, but much less so than on Asia, and particularly on India, I would like to argue that the uh, sell-off has been very, very muted uh, compared to the sort of sell-off we saw last summer uh, when, again, we saw risk aversion rise globally. Now, in terms of rate increases, uh, some countries have been uh, dealing with macro prudential measures much more than interest rate policy in the last few years. Uh, Turkey and Brazil uh, come to mind in particular, and these countries would have to move away from that and go back to conventional interest rate defense of their currencies. India was not that big in this area anyway, and the RBI has been on a rate hike mode for a number of months now. So I don't think we need to uh, combine India into those weak countries when we look at EM. India would be differentiated and slightly better, in my view. I take your point, uh, Temur. We do seem to be in a better place today than we were in May or June of 2013. But is too much of uh, being read into the current uh, current account deficit levels? Should we really put our guard down? Because a lot of it is still artificial. We've put down a lot of import curbs. The domestic economy is really not uh, reviving, so your uh, imports could probably actually uh, go up once that revival really takes place. And we're not really even seeing a pickup in your export side at this point of time. How, how comfortable are you with the way things are being read into the current account deficit? Oh, I mean, absolutely valid uh, points, and, and we should not get too carried away. I mean, we're talking about a country that was teetering on the brink of a currency crisis and a ratings downgrade just about six months ago. Uh, things cannot change that dramatically. You're right that the compression in import has been through administrative measures, and if those administrative measures are taken away, uh, imports could surge again. And of course, if there is a demand recovery, particularly on the investment side, that would also mean a pickup in capital goods imports. So the import side, perhaps we have seen the best already and uh, in terms of compression, and we might see it going up. 
On the export side, we still remain somewhat comfortable with the outlook. I know that the data has been mixed. We saw a pickup in exports in September, October, and then November, December numbers have been somewhat disappointing. But when we look at regional export data, uh, it's hard for me to see India lagging. Uh, partner country demand has picked up substantially, and not just in the U.S., but elsewhere. And, and we're seeing that in countries that are very exposed to the electronics cycle. But even beyond the electronics uh, cycle, we are seeing export demand rise, and India should see some pickup as well. Now, going back to the core question, which is the comfort level or lag thereof with respect to the current account, yes, even if the current account deficit is significantly lower than last year, it's still chunky. 45, 50, 55, whichever projection you take, these are large number in billions of dollars that need to be financed. And at a time when global liquidity is at a premium, this would be more challenging. Um, I, I think that India is in decent shape in terms of drawing that flow this year. On FDI, channels have been opened up. On financial institutional flows, we probably will see more coming into the debt market as the debt market restrictions are reduced. And also on the equity side, I suppose with the election and some of the structural measures that are being taken, investor sentiment remains favorably uh, disposed toward India. I wouldn't be too sanguine, but I'm also not an alarmist as far as the current account is concerned.